today? Hi, thank you, ma'am. Tell us your name. My name is Sarah Pfeiffer. We, um, is there, can you tell us a little bit about your growing up? How was the relations here in Mooresville, race relation? Well, in my day of growing up, it was kind of a uh, one-sided, maybe you would say, or either we knew how far to go, uh, where to go and where not to go. And um, we went to uh, Dunbar School. We went out 12 years there, and uh, we lived in the Eastern Hike community, and it was just too far for us to walk, really, but if your parents or a neighbor couldn't take you, well, you had to do the best that you could. Uh, the buses did not run for us at that time. Uh, they said that we lived too far away, but yet too close to ride the school bus. At Dunbar School, were there any um, teachers or any particular person that stood out that was an influential person to you? Yes. Um, when Mr. Cheryl came, and I think all the young men in the Mooresville area uh, in the 60s really enjoyed Arthur Cheryl. He was a man from the United States Navy, and he somewhat thought we were in the Navy. And he had no mercy for the girls, whatever the PE class was doing for that particular class, we, the girls, had to do it also. Uh, I think he brought a lot of life and guidance to the young men in this area, because a lot of families were not families, quote, quote, there is a mother as the same as it is today, or there was grandmother that kind of took care of the children uh, at that particular time. So uh, he was somewhat like a father figure, most of all a man figure in this area. So I would never forget him. And he had helpers such as Mr. Holmes and Mr. Austin. They were great with their work also. And Mr. Sherrill. Uh, what did you all do for entertainment and to pass time away? Uh -huh. well, well, my mother was the type of mother that kept you busy. Uh, she had a schedule in her head from the time you got up in the morning a time to go to bed at night. Uh, very little playing time. We had a lot of Bible study in our home. Was there a particular church you all went to or affiliate with? Well, we always went to the Bible Way Holiness Church, which was in Statesville, and um, spent a lot of time doing a lot of church work. Okay. Uh, did you all attend any of the camp meetings? I know that's a different Bible Way to the Mooresville camp meetings and everything like that. Occasionally, my grandparents would tell my mother to bring us by the camp meetings, and they by that we would get a chance to go out to Mars, especially to the camp meeting. We'd never seen an offer until we got to Mars. And they were just so exciting to get to go out there to see the Arbor. Anything particularly stuck out with you besides the Arbor? It was the food, entertainment, the people? Well, uh, uh, at that time also, um, a lot of people attended Mars and they would take their homecoming or family reunion services back out to Mars as a uh, spot where people gathered and uh, got to meet your loved ones that lived in the north that would come home for those special occasions. Um, what type of activity, um, are you familiar with Neil Town or any of the baseballs, were you able to do any of that? Well, after growing up, um, through high school, I, I, I love basketball. I played basketball. My girls played basketball. In fact, their father played basketball. And uh, he was one of the, quote, quote, uh, great uh, basketball players that came out from under Cheryl, Coach Cheryl. And uh, we could go to the 
where the Stewart's Chapel Church in that area used to be. Uh, they cleaned it off when they tore the church down. So we get to use it a little bit for our uh, softball and baseball uh, uh, ground in the summertime when we were out of school. Okay. Yeah, we heard about Stewart's Chapel and the mm -hmm. Vandenberg, Mr. Bruce right. had uh, right. put it together and stuff. And we had a, a lovely house of prayer. A lovely to today. I love the band from the House of Prayer that was across the street from the Stewart's Chapel Church. And when the band would come to town, Mrs. Woods, Mrs. Louise Woods lived below me on my parents on White Street. And um, she would always tell my mother, Eddie, Eddie, let these kids go with me to the church tonight. The band's coming. So we get to go up and get to hear the band, and we enjoy the band. And another thing about White Street, White Street was uh, developed by a man called Young White. And my father, Mr. Adams, Mr. Woods, and it seemed like one more man in that neighborhood worked for him, and he built those five houses on that street uh, when I was growing up. I, I will never forget it. Um, it was five houses on that side of the street and Mrs. Emma uh, Troutman worked for him as his maid. So she got the fifth one. Okay, so Mr. White was a, a Caucasian Rich man? white man. Mm -hmm. But he took <clears throat> my father and two or three other guys under his wing and help them get started at that particular time. And you would not believe the prices that those houses were at that time according to what prices are today. It is ridiculous. How do you um, remember about health care back then? How were you all taken care of or treated? And most health care we got was from Grandma. Grandma had a solution for every situation. She had a bottle of this, or she could go outside and come up with something for everything that you suffered from. She had something to work it out with. What was your grandmother's name? My grandmother was named Floody Stewart, and my, that was my mother's mother. My father's mother was named Lena Haynes and she lived for, uh, she worked for Henry Moore Kelly. His daughters grew up in this area. Jane Kerrigan, the principal of the school, one of the schools here right here in Mooresville was his daughter. And my grandmother was their nanny. Mm -hmm. Did you ever go over to the home and when your grandmother was being the nanny, did you ever go over to their place? Yes, we'd get to go down with my dad on Friday afternoon or and pick her up because they would let her come home to her little house with her family, which was us and some other loved ones and stay from Saturday afternoon to Sunday afternoon, and then my dad would carry her back to the farm. This was at Mount Moen. In Mount Moen, so were they like um, sharecroppers in that time? Or uh, yes, because he had, oh my God, uh, cows. My daddy was a professional cow maker. At that time, you know, they had got the electric ones that you hook to the cow and milk them. I don't know what the process, but we'd have to go down. When they would go out of town for vacation or something, he would take us to the farm with him to do the cows in the afternoon to get the milk. The professional cow milk. So um, when you all traveled, how were you traveling? Well, for some reason or another, my dad always had a car. And we didn't have many cars at that time, but my dad had a car. Of course, he worked several jobs. 
Very smart man. Very smart man. Was he educated? I mean, smart, yeah. but no schooling? Seventh grade, I think. Mm -hmm. My mother was seventh grade. Did they instill education for you all? I know you said you went to the 12th grade. Did yeah, they they, how was they that? made sure that we had time out for study, time out for rest, and get up and go to school. They would carry us to school. My mother would drive us to school daily. Did you have a large family? I had two brothers and one sister. Okay. How do you feel about Mosul? Just your personal feelings? Well, by living here all my life, <clears throat> I have learned how to cope with the good and the bad. And during my high school time, I was one of the first black people to work at the Belts department store. I wrapped gifts my senior, junior and senior year in high school. So I got to know a lot of the white people. And even to the day, I won't call any names, uh, I have a little somewhat connection with uh, some of the people of uh, the opposite race that you can always get a favor from. And how do you feel about segregation in Wallsville? <laughs> it's slow. Seems like we make two steps up sometimes and two steps back. Sometimes it makes you feel like you've been forgotten, or do we need to just let it be? But deep down in my heart, no. We have to keep pushing forward because our children have grown up in this area. I have had two daughters to graduate from this area, gone on and graduated from college and it wasn't always easy. Many times I had to go to the school, and I was one of those parents that just didn't mind going to the schoolhouse. I would go and find out the real problem. You can't always go by what your child say. Sometimes you have to go find out what really brought the situation on and handle it from there. And. Um, I still say there's a lot of improvement could be done in this area. How do you think it happens? Working together brings about a change. I do know that. You really have to stay with it and on it to get something done. And during the course of your life, um, what changes have you seen in Moors would it really stand out to you? <laughs> um, I'll say this. There's a lot of changes been made and then you look around on the other side and seem like we had crossed that bridge but then it's back before us again. So I don't know, as I've said before, if we're really making a lot of progress, or we just kind of just going with the flow. And when you were growing up, did they talk to you or teach you about voting? Sure. I've always voted. Always. And what did they talk about, you know, just back in the day? What was the conversation with black people and voting? <laughs> remember, or maybe you don't remember, but there was a time we didn't vote, especially women folk. We couldn't vote. <clears throat> but as time moved on, we have got to that point now where that we can vote. And I do stress the fact that we need to encourage everybody to vote. That's one way you can bring about a change, is by your voting. 
Give me like 10 seconds. I just want them to go by. <clears throat> All right, bro. <clears throat> One question. <clears throat> From back when you were in school, maybe say sixth grade, eighth grade, and ninth grade. Can you see that, I mean, do you feel that minorities was more together then than they are now? That, that they really try to help one another and motivate and uh, get the kids a good education compared to the way that we work together today. It would seem like there's a great distance from back then to now. Some parents have a lot of interest in making sure that their children are educated. There's a group that seems like it doesn't matter. A lot of children don't always have the proper um, coaching along the way. That's one thing I liked about Cheryl. I don't care who you thought you were. He had a way that he could bring you around to where you wanted to get your lesson out because you wanted to participate in whatever he was uh, doing at that particular time and I wonder today if the students are encouraged to want to make something out of their lives. This is a thing that we have to start with at home and if we don't start it at home family life it, it, it just never materializes. Well, I can say that I knew uh, Arthur, uh, Cheryl. Mm -hmm. I met him before. I think he's probably deceased now. He is. Because uh, I think he, his family's from Statesville. Yes. And he, when I met him, he was living in, in um, Black Mountain. And up in the mountains, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, every time I seen him, because, uh, you know, I got my 33rd degree in Mason. He was big in Mason, uh -huh. and, and Shriners and all, and we all communicated. And every time I'd see him, he would always ask about Muslim. Always had something good to say about Muslim. And uh, he was that type of guy, yes, that he could motivate you and say things that would in a smile and in a nice way that could really pick your spirit up and right. make you right. go and get it. And uh, same thing with Mr. Austin and Mr. Holmes. Mr. Yeah. Holmes, uh, before he passed, uh, we was in the shrines together. We was in the same shrine temple mm -hmm. as Mr. Holmes. And uh, last time I seen him, he just brought him a homo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but that's how I was. Yeah, that's how I just like it. And he always asked about Simon Canadians. He always talked about Simon Jerpy. Mm -hmm. uh, their dress. You yes. Know? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. I did have one other question. You said you worked at Belk. How was the? How would they treat you at Belk? That's her. That's our new girl. Uh, and you know that's the way it was the first several days. But finally, it smoothed out, and I was made to feel like I was coming to work just like anybody else. Then after working there 10 years, uh, I went back and worked, uh, after working after high school, I went back and worked 10 more years in the shipping and receiving department. And I liked that. I got a great education from a guy named Pete Coleman. Uh, with the school system, you said you went over because you were an involved parent. Do you um, feel that we've come a long way by having our first African-American principal, female? I certainly do. And my hat goes off to her. Mm -hmm. 
Is there anything that you'd like to share about Mooresville that you think the world needs to know? No. All right, thank you.